Hey, folks, welcome. Game 51. And let me mute myself there. Sorry about that. Okay, better. All right. Uh, game 51. And uh, you know what? We are just going to jump right into it. Michael, what, uh, what have we got going in game 51? Okay. Um, we're going to have a semi and then more semi -eyes. So it's kind of semi eyes galore. Um, and it's, it's going to be semi eyes throughout the game. <laughs> so you, you get to tell me uh, what's fighting what. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get some help, folks. So pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. So unusually, we have a Chinese opening here. And um, AlphaGo actually doesn't play the kick. So this is actually different from, from what we are seeing in the more modern machines. It has been a few years, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that it's changing. But just about anyone, professional player now would be playing the kick in this position. And actually, this was what we were playing before. And uh, something like this is what I would expect, where Black is trying to put some pressure on these white stones. Um, by putting pressure on these white stones, Black is making it difficult for white to jump into the three three point here. Because if white does that, um, it's going to be bad for, uh, for instance, in a position like uh, something like this, it's, it's going to be bad for that group white has on the right side. Mm. So it, it sort of discourages white from jumping into the three three point. So that's the idea behind this attack. And it's, it works in a, in a way that is easy for human players to understand. And it was, it, so it's what I would suggest that people should be using in their actual games. Mm -hmm. But AlphaGo um, simply answered. And we got into this variation, which was sort of new at the time. Um, people just have not have stopped playing this move. Black would not answer it, could probably play away. Nowadays, a professional player would probably jump into one of the true three points. Or more traditionally, you could just play an approach move here and build on the lower side. That, that works also. So white plays here. The difference between this move and the slide on the second line is that this is more forceful, and you can expect Black to be answering it somehow. And Black played the old-fashioned Joseki again. This is a position where sometimes you might see this. It's, it's a very subtle difference. So for instance, in the case that white plays here and then plays some kind of an extension, it's just the fact that Black has not played this exchange. Mm. So if we compare it to the more standard order of moves where Black starts with this and then connects, it's just that that exchange of these two stones, which is, it's better for Black not to have it on the board, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a very fine difference, a, a subtle difference. So it's, it's okay. not something that people should really get too upset about. Um, and if Black does play that move this way, you might be seeing white playing a different way. So instead of playing here, white can also play moves like this. And, and in this case, white will probably not play this move, but will play the extension for a game like this. This would be an even, even result. So there's all sorts of things that could have happened, but it's not a big deal. Black, does, black pushes through here, actually. And hmm. um, we get into this variation. Where AlphaGo played this move, which I found very surprising, um, interesting move. Yeah. And this move has actually gone, it's come, gone out of play. It, there was a period where we were copying this, and then we stopped playing it. So the more common variation here is for white to connect, actually, immediately. And if black pushes this way. In a variation like this, uh, Black still has issues with White jumping in somewhere around here next. Mm -hmm. So Black's going to have to deal with that. And that Black group on the upper side is not so strong either. So actually, Black is not going to play that way, but is going to build on the right side like this. And after this, there's all sorts of variations. Like mm. Sometimes White is going to sacrifice uh, these three stones. Sometimes black is going to sacrifice these two stones. And it, it all sort of, um, it's all choices that the players can make and it's about even. So it, it gets really complicated. I'll just leave it here. It's, it's going to be a fight on the upper side. Okay. And actually people have um, also started playing this move, which is quite similar. 
um, in that black is, this is be a better, doing a better job of uh, protecting the side here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, black is going to um, play more strongly on the upper side. And in this case, black already has a right side. So this is how the most modern variation of this played by human players. And then black would probably could move up. Um, I'm, I'm showing black playing a Kakari in the upper left. Um, you'd probably ask a computer and get uh, some three three invasions at this point also. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just there, um, it's impossible to escape the three three invasions. So this is probably bad for white in that it um, gives black a solid shape here, but it's a very s small difference anyway. And white plays here. So this move, it works really well, surprisingly. Like this, you remember probably how um, sort of uptight how I was about this move. I do, I do. Yeah. Um, it, make, it works well. And this is a position where black has already has a very solid position on the right side. And so just showing the game variation, white's happy to give that black territory on the right side because black was strong there already. So basically white is um, turning the Joseki around where if white had played a Kakari um, in a more normal fashion, then black would be getting territory on the lower side while attacking white and white would have a group, a uh, baseless group on the right side. Right. So this would be bad for white. Um, by playing the attachment here and um, curling around to the left, white is actually managing to do a very similar thing to that variation, which was bad for white. Only white is pointed towards the lower side, and it means white gets to play an extension. Mm. And so it's working very well. I like that. Okay. So let's see. Um, Black could have cut here. This is also something we see a lot, and it's about even. Um, it actually is bad for white to go for the corner. Um, this is just an eyeless group, so it would be bad. Mm. Uh, so this is actually not mm. so good for white. It's just too good for black towards the lower side. And white is going to go down here. And a variation like this. In this case, black might just extend Sometimes you see black curling around and capturing the stone. In this case, this, this stone would be a bit too close to, right. the, to the wall. So, um, so I'm showing black uh, playing this move, which, which takes care of that stone fairly well, and something like this. So this would be mm -hmm. an even result. But in the game, black allows white to do that. All of these variations, um, like this is sort of out of fad for black now, and black would have played that other variation where black captures the two stones. But it's a, again, it's a very subtle difference. So we come to this position where black has a very solid right side. Um, I'd say that's a solid 40 points or so. And it's um, pretty impossible for white to come in into that territory. So black has solid territory and white has control over the rest of the board. Mm -hmm. So you want to guess a uh, move for black? Well, I've I think I'm trying to figure out where this where the first semi eye is. All uh, right, it's 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 um two Joseki's away. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Um, well, I'm, I'm assuming it's got to be either the upper left or the lower left, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. What kind of moves would you be looking at? Oh, you know, what the hell? I don't know. C4 just for just for fun. <laughs> C4. Okay. Yeah, you're getting fancy. This move? I, I'm totally. Yeah. Let me let, oh, let me see. Let yeah, me see if I let, let me see. Yeah. Let me see if Obviously I uh, the alpha goal. Oh, I I already am showing the uh, answer actually. Sorry about that. Um it's just a three three point. Oh, okay. Too, yeah. I was getting too so clever. It's, it's a pretty obvious um thing. Um I was I was yeah. <laughs> so um, the point is here that black has this solid territory on the right. And so black doesn't really have much potential towards the center or the sides of the board now. It's all established territory that black has. And because black is so strong on the right, black uh, will re have relatively little difficulty in reducing white. So mm. black's just going through the territory. And so if white um, allows black to take the corner like this, for instance, 
Um, Black would probably just jump in again. Oh, wow. And just take all the three three points and would have something in the vicinity of 60 points of territory. And, and then it's, it's all cash, basically. It's all solid territory. Mm-hmm. And then Black would just be diving into White's Moyo. And okay. um, it's working for Avogo. Actually, this is a, a strategy in this case, when Black is so solid in the territories that Black has, it's a strategy that would work for human players too, that human players would, would like to use. So actually, AlphaGo is, uh, is white. White is also going for the territory in the format. So the, uh, the positional judgment here is the same for both, both sides. Mm. And Black played here. So in this position, if Black pushes here, White's going to play probably something on the left side. So these two points are Mi. Mm-hmm. And this is a really important point here that is building on the lower side. Yes, yes, yes. OK. So um, why don't you just name three, um, three choices that Black has when White plays the attachment and the extension here? Uh, C17. Uh, I guess there's the push at C15. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Is C16, the, is yes. that also a move? Right. You're, re- so you're really testing me today. So there's, yeah, yeah. There's this move, which is the Joseki that's been around probably a few centuries. I don't know. It could have been um, in the ancient Chinese mm. um, go also. You know, they, they did play star points. Mm. Um, they had the star points, um, yeah. a lot of star point Joseki. I wouldn't right. be surprised if they had this one too. Um, so it, um, it's, I know it's been around for a long time in Japan. I'm not so sure. If it was around in China, it's uh, naturally more ancient. Mm-hmm. This is a move that was very popular uh, several decades ago. Right. Um, it almost always gets a bad score with the computer. Hmm. And so, and people were saying that this position where white gets a solid position on the outside, and we're assuming that there was no pincer stone, as in this case. Mm-hmm. Uh, locally, this is just much more efficient for white with this black stone being captured. Mm. It's, a, it's much more efficient for white. And you can only play it when the direction of play is working really well for black. And actually, this is a case where it is. So this is a case where black could have done that. Mm. In fact, I, I would have liked this. Um, you can see that everything is working just perfectly as far as the, the, the story of the game is. And actually, black is threatening to play here next. So that's right. That's right. That, yeah. If white answers that, then black will have the initiative to do something on the lower side. Or if white plays um, plays on the lower side, um, then black will play here immediately. Mm-hmm. And in this case, black is going to be looking um, to play a, a ladder breaking move next. So, for instance, something like this, right? Ladder break, and and that will help black get into the lower side too. And es- escaping at seven and um, nine, there, it's actually a huge move. It's, it's it's bigger than it looks. So this would probably be okay for black. Hmm. Um, not to go overboard, I, I did also make a variation for white playing here. Um, but uh, black generally, when black gets to connect here, um, in this case, the tesuji here is to attach here and sort of sacrifice the stones in the lower left, something like this. Black would be attacking white in the upper left area and still has, um, still has the potential to connect underneath on the left side. So mm-hmm. this would be okay for black. So actually, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards the 3-3 point in this variation. Uh, but in the game, AlphaGo played, uh, yeah. So we looked at uh, the 3-3 point. We looked at this move. Not really, but this is, this is the old-fashioned move that's been around for centuries, at least. And this is the move that is very popular now. Um, basically, it's popular because of AlphaGo, because AlphaGo played this move every time. Right. And all of the modern computer programs play this move. But this was a case where this was viable. This was maybe the better move. Hmm. Um, and white plays here. In this position, um, people, who, amateur players, weaker players who play this are generally a bit nervous about the cutting point when black pushes through here. And the bottom line is that white doesn't really have to worry about getting cut off here. Um, provided these stones in the center 
are in a healthy state. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if black plays this move, you might see players, uh, professional players playing moves like this. Um, I'm not going to try to explain this move. It, <laughs> it's really sort of um, the logic behind this move is, is pretty weird. It's, it's hard to play it correctly um, for weaker players. So it's not really a good idea unless if, if you're, if you can research this, then you don't need me to help you learn how to play. Yeah. <laughs> you have you have been warned, folks. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest that this is the good move to play. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was saying, white white's object here <laughs> is to make these stones on the outside healthy, so that in the case that, for instance, if black um, plays, let's see, I, I think one of the variations I made was this one, and white plays something like this. In the case that black pushes through here. You might note that I played this stone here. This, this stone at three was getting rid of the cut. So that's one of the problems black has to deal with before black can cut white here. Mm -hmm. And also white's alive in the corner anyway. Right. And in fact, if black does this too early, then black's just going to make trouble for his own group because mm -hmm. that corner group that white has, it's actually pretty difficult to kill it. Mm -hmm. And it's, at the best, it's going to be a co or something. So it's really difficult for black to kill that white group and the black group on the side is likely to die first. And so a more realistic variation would be black running out into the center. And at some point, white plays this move. And again, this is getting rid of the cut there, because if black cuts there, it's going to be trouble for black on this side. And so it, it's just a very uncomfortable situation mm. where white has some forcing, forcing moves here, so white could eventually try stuff like this. And so you, you can make all sorts of variations from this. It's going to be complicated. But the bottom line is that even if black captures the corner, it's going to be a bit painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white's so, really thick on the outside. Yeah, it, it could go wrong. But yeah, I think in general, it's going to be good for white. So in the game, black played a wider extension here. And white played the shoulder hit and, and here. And then, OK, yeah, so white It's very similar. So for instance, if black pushes through here, this would be still focusing on the cutting point here. And white would jump. And you can see it's sort of similar to the previous variation, where the important stone that white got was this one. That's the stone that white was trying to get there. It's just giving white a very good shape in the center of the board, so that in the case that black does something like this, white has a good position on the, on the outside. And th in this case, white would just cut here, and it would be bad for black. Right. So that's the idea that white has here. And in this case, white is going to use this move. It, it gets rid of the cut. Mm -hmm. I was really expecting white to cut here. Ah, sorry, that was a misclick. Um, black will connect on the third line. Um, this black stone here is actually pretty annoying. <laughs> and there's a cut here in some cases. Um, it's just that. Uh, this 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 shape here is bad too, and it would be more more problem for white than good. So I, I sort of agree with double honey here. And this is where it's going to get a bit exciting. So we're coming closer oh to the now. Oh my goodness! Uh, what white would like would be for mm -hmm. black to, um, for instance, to try to save the this ponuki on the side. Mm -hmm. So if black does something like uh, something like this, this is what white wants to happen. So white would do something like this and something like this, a variation like this, it would just be, white would be pushing black around, and be very happy for white. So this is basically what white is trying to do. And um, what black is trying to do is a bit less clear. Black, uh, black, looks, really, black looks really busy. Is it that one, two, really three, busy? Three, three groups, right? Right. So black has um, that group on the upper side is pretty strong. So the, the white stones attached to it on the upper side are the weak ones, and the black group is, is strong enough. So black does have two very weak groups on the left side. Uh, looking at the, the pros for black, black is looking at, for instance, this move would cut white off, and this white group would have only half an eye on this point. And we're assuming there's a black stone somewhere around here strengthening the left side. So white would have half an eye at the circled area, and the corner would be um, half an eye too. So white would at this point white would have to add one stone to have two eyes. And, right. and if white plays a stone somewhere, white will be alive. But 
So Black has this idea. Also, Black has the idea of cutting on the other side in some cases, which would be this move in here. This also cuts white and is slightly more aggressive. It's a bit, uh, even a stronger attack. Mm. Um, at this point, Black's not strong enough to actually do that. Kind of <coughs> so these are the attacks that Black is looking at. And so Black's main group is, is this one. And in some cases, Black is going to try to sac sacrifice this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so that's I've given you what Black is trying to do and what White is trying to do. Don't see. Don't be surprised if it changes <laughs> as the variation <laughs> goes on. Okay. So All Black right. is um, um, reinforcing the side there, and uh, next stop, Black is going to play one of those cuts in the center of the board. So if, if White does something. Uh, something really simple and easy to understand like this, um, Black would probably play one of these two cuts in the center of the board, maybe this one. I, I honestly don't know which is better. There, it's a, maybe this is better. Mm, and better. the idea would be to force White to live in the corner, and Black would have an area in the center of the board which is starting to look like a Black Moyo. And it's okay to lose those stones in the lower left. So White covers there. White's trying to keep the pressure on Black, and is not so interested in killing that black ponuki. So white's uh, sort of, um, basically white's threatening to cut here, but doesn't really want to do it. <laughs> like white's just trying to get black to add a stone to that group to connect. It, basically it's a giant game of chicken at this point. Yes, and it gets worse. So <laughs> black here. Okay, so here, um, my uh, snap reaction would be to push through here. Mm -hmm, of course. And black is going to play here. And this move is a really neat move, which was sort of the surprise. So this is basically, it's looking at the wedge at D10 mm -hmm. and the connection at, um, at B11. Right. So white plays here, black disconnects underneath. Um, going back to this point, if white pushes through, uh, black's going to just sacrifice those stones anyway. So it's something like this anyway. And if, if white captures the stones, now black gets to this point. White has to do something about the corner, and black's going to switch to the center of the board menu. So this is black's and, game plan here. Yeah, and what, what you're showing so clearly is that that Panuki, which looked so big a little while ago, it just, mm -hmm. it just looks, it's, it's so small now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. When, uh, when you play this Joseki and black gets a pony gun outside, and then white gets the knight's move here, um, actually, in human games also, in top professional games, um, Black does not always answer that knight's move. Mm -hmm. Like if Black had answered that, there would be no problem there. It would be a mm -hmm, big move. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you play bigger opening points. And so it's not uncommon for a professional player to sacrifice this point of view. Wow. So that was not the big surprise. It's just um, each move, it's, it's really very difficult to calculate for human players here. So white is refusing to, to allow black to get that connection underneath. Basically, it was this connection on the second line that white is not going to mm -hmm. allow black to do. And in the process, it's going to get really dangerous for white too. So white chooses this point to cut here. And black peeps at a very strange point. And the fun, fun thing about this is the question, wh why, why not curling around like this? This is yeah. such a more natural shape. Yeah. And this is really a fun variation. White's going white's gonna to peep on the second line. OK. Obviously, Black does not want White to do this, right? This, mm -hmm, this would just mm -hmm. be a dead Black group. Right, right, right. The Black pushes through. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Black pushes through. Yeah, so six here is the key move, because if black pushes through, then this is going to be a double threat. Mm. That's no good, right? So black pushes through too, and white's going to play this squeeze. This squeeze is the, um, the clinching move, this, um, because black, after white has already played the six and seven uh, exchange here, this is just too smooth for white. <laughs> and if black goes down, now white connects. This black group on the side is not alive. So right. that's what 10 and 11 was doing because obviously with 11, 
Black would have liked to be able to capture the two stones and have two eyes, but mm -hmm. when Black has gone down to the first line like this, mm -hmm. and and then White can just escape in the center, and Black's going to have to uh, protect the side. It's just a bad variation to find out. So that would be a very um, a sweet ending for White. Yeah. Um, and so Black plays the peep. So I, it's it's actually correct. Um, and White plays here. Yes, so it's hard right. to judge uh, who's attacking whom. Like in some cases, maybe white is going to sacrifice this group on the side. <laughs> and yeah, it's of really counterintuitive, but uh, it actually works. So, uh, so white starts by playing the semi here. And when you have a situation like this, it doesn't really matter whether white played this move or this move. Um, from black's point of view, black's going to play the same the key point for black is the same move. So in a position like this, where you have a semi-eye, quite often it's a vital point to take the eye in mm -hmm. this diagonal shape here, because black is creating a lot of points that white has to fill to put the black group in the target. So all these four points that have become black's liberties. So that's why this move is increasing black's liberties by a great deal. Um, it's much better than the shape where if, if you would assume that black had played a move like this, this would be filling one of those four liberties that was actually fills two of them all at once. So both one and two here, these are points that white had to spend a move to fill. So covering here would be the worst possible move. Very important to keep those extra liberties. So this is a kind of a shape that's worth remembering in um, semi-nice, racist mm -hmm. catch. So now when white plays here, white's going for a seki. So at this point, white is, aiming to make a seki out of it. But um, if we look at a variation that Kadago showed me, it's also an idea for white just to sacrifice the side in this variation. The white can play this peep, uh, which actually is a forcing move at this time. And then white's gonna play here. And black's only uh, viable response is to play here and sacrifice the two stones to capture white. And black has captured the white group on the side. But if white uh, plays here, now this is black has to play a move on the outside here. And this is if black plays 18 inside somewhere, black's going to capture that white group. Uh, but when black does something like that, it means that white is going to get a lot of forcing moves from the center. And we're going to have this huge territory. It's going to turn right. into a territory. Right. And it's going to be good enough for white. So in the main variation, I have Black playing that move at 18. And this is going to be a call. So it's, it's a call that White's not going to continue playing. But if White continues playing there, it's going to be a, both sides have four liberties. So if White plays first, it's going to be a call to decide who, who wins on the side. But at this point, the upper side, White 23 is a bit more important move. So White actually had this choice where White tries to sacrifice the left side and looks like Black is going to refuse to take it. Very much AlphaGo style, I think. Yeah. And so yeah, so White plays, when White plays here though, White is aiming to get a Seki. Okay, so White also, this is the key point here. Um, if White had allowed Black to play that point in a variation, something like, um, let's just have a, a filling the Liberty. If, if black pushes through here and then plays here, this is going to reduce white's eye space very, very quickly, very, very quickly. Mm. So this is, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a co, actually. It's gonna be an indirect co in which black, um, black can win immediately, but white has to win two co's too. Mm. So it's, it's an advantage for black. So that's a vital point. So white plays there. At this point, it's going to be a seki. But this is a kind of a fuzzy seki because maybe it's a ko. It's a, I don't remember learning that, that, that one. I know about the seki. Is a fuzzy seki? What, what the heck is a fuzzy seki? Either a seki well, or it's not a seki. It's, no, it's, it's not clear. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's just, um, there is the issue of, is two always going to be answered by three? I'm going to ignore that for the time being. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, white's just going to not play in three and go immediately for the black. But you can see if white plays first, 
and both sides continue filling liberties like this. Mm. It is a co. But again, it's a kind of a co that white doesn't really want to get into because um, white has to win the co twice. Right. So yeah, so it's a dangerous co for white to get into. If white I mean, does have a huge advantage in co-threats, white does have the option of starting this call. Okay, uh, now back to black. Okay, let's get back to that position. About black, if black starts filling liberties. Now. Oops. Oh, it wasn't a call, sorry. Black can't get a call yet, but um, so it's not a call yet. Uh, that was a mistake. But um, okay. in some cases, black will, um, for instance, in the case that white um, cuts here, there are some cases where black's going to be getting this point, in which case um, that, that co I was trying to show you, there's a one move difference there, and it, it is a co for black. So there are some okay. cases where black is going to start the co. All right, so for the time being, it's the Seki. And more importantly than all those co's I was talking about, the moment it's a Seki, and the fact that if white starts here, uh, obviously black is not going to immediately answer that. And it's going to take something like five, six more moves for white to actually resolve this situation. It's going to be a co forever. So the, that fact makes it a relatively an unimportant move for white to um, try to start the co here. So they're going to leave it for, for just about ever. <laughs> until maybe and maybe until this white group in the corner gets into trouble, then white would have to go after it. Okay, so finally black gets to this point. It's still a good point. And white plays two moves on the upper side. Um, and black plays here. Um, this move is another move that I found hard to understand. Actually, it was white's move here. Um, I would have played here. And I think the idea here is that black is trying to sacrifice these two stones on the side in a variation, something like this, so that black can start building in the center. Of course, you can mm. see black is reducing the lower side a little bit. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, so we've uh, covered the first semi. -I. Let's see. Uh, so, um, yeah. so white extended here, black connected. Um, and it's still sort of a seki. <clears throat> Sort of, it, it doesn't matter actually. And black is connected on the lower side. Um, I really like these two knights moves that white played. Mm -hmm. It's a, kind of a loose shape, but it doesn't matter now that black is connected. White can always throw away these four stones. So, so these four stones have ceased to be important. Yeah. Um, and white is reducing the center. Uh, white's side territory here is a bit. It's it's not very. Uh, it's not very secure. So mm -hmm. at any point, black can jump in somewhere around here. But the center is probably, this is a point actually where white could have done something like this and tried to surround the side. Um, I'm not sure how much territory white's going to get there, though. Instead, white starts a fight in the center. And this is a really weird move. I think white is just trying to play a forcing move there. And obviously, black is not going to answer it. So this move is just making it slightly more difficult for white to connect on the side. If white had played this move, for instance, white would be connected on the side. Mm. The, and if black plays this afterwards, then white can counter with this. And this would threaten the two stones here. Mm -hmm. Black has to mm -hmm. answer, and white can then answer in the corner. So basically, by playing this move here, um, it makes it more difficult for white to connect with this move because black will wedge here. And it's going to be a connection on the first line. In some cases, that's going to be an issue. Obviously, it's not such a serious issue yet, but it's going to be an issue in some cases. But white's not, white's not really so serious about saving those stones. It's um, sort of interesting. OK, so black plays here. Now white's um, at the last moment, white, if black had answered this move, white was going to play here. And this would connect the group. Mm. And so I think what uh, this move was trying to do, it was just playing an exchange first before black starts the semi, because white is going to win this by one move. It means black's going to squeeze a little bit. So if black plays here, um, it's like this. Or if black plays here, this is a one move win for white. So yeah, Th this was mm. an easy semi. I, I didn't actually count this in the semi when I was talking about a lot of semi. Mm. The tough ones are coming up. 
Oh, cheers. <laughs> so black, um, so white could have done this immediately. White could have done this at this point, but it was just that extra stone, I think, that white wanted um, pushing through there. So in mm. this case, black would have a more solid shape towards the center. So it was just that subtle difference. White was pushing through once to make, oh, sorry, to make a, a hole in black's position. And black refused to cover on the fifth line. Oh, that's the sixth line, that is. And white pushes out. And black is trying to attack white on the upper side. But if you ask me, it looks like black is getting into trouble here because black's group on the upper side isn't very strong either. So if black had played this move, black would have been in trouble with this. It's just, um, just this, this variation. It's, it's going to be, black's going to be squeezed and it's going to be sort of isolated on the other side. White's going to take the initiative in this variation. So for instance, something like this. Obviously, black can add a stone here or something and live, but it's, it's just black is not accomplished very much. White is, white is getting a strong position towards the center. Mm. So instead, black uh, plays here, and white gets to connect. And black is still cutting here. And this is not really working for black. You can see black's getting squeezed a little bit on the upper side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now white is counterattacking. Oh, wow. And just looking at the flow here, I'm, I can say that it's not working for black. Um, it's going to be really, really difficult in actual play. So um, although I can see that this is good for white, I wouldn't be surprised if I made a whole bunch of mistakes in, in the execution. It's, it's that kind of complicated situation. Mm. So black moves out into the center. You can see white's trying to connect up there. Oh, sorry, that was a misclick. And white has to deal with the group in the center too. And the, the game position is getting a bit complicated. I mm. think black's going to be okay on the upper side. Black does have a kind of a forcing move. Black is pretty much okay um, in, the, in, in the upper side here. I, I'd say black has an eye here and sort of a potential eye here. Mm -hmm. um, it'll um, it'll, it'll um, we'll work out in the end. Um, black has to be careful of this group, though, because this group is not 100% alive. So at some point, white can be threatening to play this move, which is going to improve the, the future co there. It's going to give one extra liberty to white. If white mm -hmm. plays a stone here, that's going to um, make, instead of two moves at this point and this point that black had to play to fill white's liberties, black's going to have to play an Atari here and take and then fill here. That's three moves. So that's mm -hmm. this is ex actually extending white's liberties. It's going to make that co one step better for white on the left side, if white ever does that anyway. So this is a potential problem black has on the left here. And OK, so with this capping move, obviously, black is trying to put pressure on white in the center. There's also the fact that if black would like to be able to do this, but for the time being, white's going to play here. And we have to remember this point is it's always going to be forcing, pretty much constantly forcing for white. So um, it's going to make that that's going to make it difficult for black to cut off these four stones, which they're not completely connected, but uh, they're I'll just say they're difficult to cut. Mm -hmm. And there's the fact that if black fills this liberty, the black stones in the center have lousy shape too. So in this case, I'll just attempt a variation here. Um, I'm not sure this is actually working. Um, white could, let's see, white's not going to die on the upper side necessarily. I'm sort of getting lost in my own variation. Um, let's leave it somewhere. I think it's going to be okay for white because black is in bad shape in the upper in the center. White is threatening to capture uh, these three stones mm -hmm. um, with an Atari at uh, P, P6. Right. And uh, the, the problem I was having there was white sort of needs four liberty. So white needs to play at 28 before Killing black in the center of the right, state. Right. But I think white's okay. Okay, back to the game. So black plays the capping move. So black is basically trying to set up um, this attack here. 
but black's not alive on the left there. That that's a problem. So already this this move here, it's going to work next time. So if white had played something like this, uh, maybe black would play here, and and that would cut off the whole upper upper right mm. area. Um, the left side is it's going to be some kind of a call maybe. So that's that's bad for black too, but. The upper right area is going to be pretty big too. So I haven't calculated that, but it's it's probably dangerous for white also. So white played this move. And again, this this is coming as a forcing move. And black has to protect the center. This all makes sense so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, white plays here. White's still not really connected yet, but for instance, if black plays here, um, there's various problems with that. Of course, there's a net there if white plays here. Um, but it's probably better for white to actually kill the black group in the corner. So that would um, pretty much kill that black group. It's a, it's a double call. Yeah. So black can play here. Um, so it's a call here and it's a call here. So it's a double call. So that would be good enough for white. So black curls around. Yeah, yeah. So white, black's not completely connected there. <laughs> but yeah, with this diagonal move here, um, black has pretty much resolved that problem. So um, basically, if white tries to cut black off, uh, this is a forcing move. White has to capture the one stone, and black can push through here. So that's, uh, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that is that area is sort of working for black. The problem is that these four stones are sort of left behind. Black's not going to give up on those four stones, just to give you forewarning. Um, so well, wait, wait, what happened to all this? You know, sacrificing stuff. Uh, which sacrificing stuff? Just about sacrifice. everything is dead at this point. I know, right? <laughs> So that black group in the center of the board, it's, it's sort of questionable whether it's alive or not. I mean, uh, I tell you which groups I'm talking about. OK, first of all, let's look at this group. It's not alive. It only has the one eye here. Uh, that was messy. It only has the <laughs> one eye here. Right. And, and there's a, a point here that is maybe or maybe not going to be a black eye. And it depends on the thread of a cut here, which is sometimes sourcing, but not always. So if white can um, find a way to take these four stones off of the board, then next white will be able to kill that black group on the left mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. with, with these four black stones healthy, then white will, I think that's going to play out in the game, actually. White's going to have trouble. A actually, white did play this move. And with this exchange, um, even if black had played something like this, black would have been able to to live. Um, and if we assume a very solid position for white on the outside, then the Tesuji would be to play here, and white would be able to kill it. But it's basically the fact that these four black stones are still on the board, and they were connected to this stone. Um, it means that that's not very realistic, this position. So uh, when black played, if black had played that move here, black would have been able to live. Mm -hmm. But it would have just been living alone, and then white would be going after that black group on the right. Uh, white would play this forcing move. This would be forcing black on the on the right there, and then white would just go after these stones. And white's group here, in the process of all this stuff, this group here has sort of moved into the right side there, and it's it's sort of okay. It's it's not going to die now. So that group is it has one eye there on the upper side. Mm. And it's going to be able to make another eye on, on the on the right side of the board. This area here is is going to be a co, um, but it's not very important anymore. It's just too small. the The main problem is that black is in trouble on the on the lower part of the board. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so black cuts, and now white's group in the center is locally dead. And you notice black fill the liberty there. Mm -hmm. uh, really, Black's giving up that group in the upper left. If Black had not done that, this would have been filling a liberty for the Black group. Uh, white's group in the center has more than five liberties. Mm -hmm. And I think no, it'd be a lot, lot more than there. Board, yeah. 
I think it means White can afford to play this move and still win the fight. Yes. Uh, everything dies. So White 4 is a very good Aji move that White would like to be able to play. In the game, the fact that White Black extended a liberty here, in this case, uh, this liberty belongs, for the time being, it sort of belongs to Black, uh, because Black has an eye and the White group in the center does not. So this is developed into a semi between this White group and this Black group. This Black group uh, is connected to the right. This Black group is OK. Right. This black group is looking sort of dead, but um, of course the white group on the lower side is dead too. So it's, it's a, this is gonna be a race to capture of some kind also. But for the time being, that's not relevant because this black group, as it stands, it already has enough liberties to beat the white group in the center of the board. So, so, so everything so. hinges on this fight between the white group on the center, in the center of the board and the black group on the left. And in this case, white has to fill a liberty. And this is a really, really troublesome move. It's, it's bad shape for white. Yeah. And we're gonna see what happens when black plays here and here and here. So what do you uh, think happened? You know, I was actually, <laughs> white, no, while you were talking, I was- I'm gonna play one more move for white. I'm gonna play yeah. here and I'll let you play the black, black, black move. Twice. Yeah, I, I've actually been trying to read that out because I- yeah. actually, yeah, I mean, I get to drink some tea here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would love for Black just to be able to cut directly. Uh, cut. There's two places you can cut. Um, probably just uh, E13 or three E3, right? E3. Um, E3 sort of works. But uh, this is, yeah. I think that's this, this whole game. You keep saying sort of. This is a sort of game. It sort of works. Uh, this would actually give white a chance to to get back to this variation, which is a bit more difficult for black. Oh, because of the stones on the upper, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not as straightforward. And can, does does I would love if um, if e six works, but I don't know. It's just a ladder, Chris. Right, right. It's a ladder. How about the p? No, no, it's it's a ladder for black. Oh. <laughs> Oh, how cool. So, yeah, that's why white couldn't cover on the second line. Wow. I hope everybody right. else saw that. Yep. So white actually could not cover on the second line. So now it's, um, you can see all, all these liberties like this, this liberty and this liberty, white's been filling liberties like crazy on the black group here. So now the semi between this group and this group, uh, now white has a huge advantage there. Hmm. So now black's going to try to kill this group in the corner. <laughs> of course he is. So it's going to be a semi between the black group are, and this group. Are we not entertained? And so black plays here. Right. And you, you see it sort of reverts to that variation that where you were trying to cut it uh, each right, week. Right, the right. same shape. Um, and white connects here. So if black continues with this move, white's going to play here. Black only has three liberties. Yeah. Okay. So um, black pushes here. Yeah, this is the game variation. And white. So this is the, the key that's, move here. This is the move nice, that that's nice shape. Well, yeah, if white had played the connection, if white had played the connection, black would play here and here. This right. is actually dead. Yep. White only yep. has two liberties. Right. So this is bad. Um, but by connecting there at the empty triangle shape, there's no way for black to fill a liberty. So if black plays this way, black has to play the net now. It's three, three liberties. Three, three liberties, yeah. White yep. wins. Yeah, yeah. And you know, basically the fact that black doesn't have time to, to make an eye here is what is making it difficult. Um, so for instance, even if black somehow captures the stones in the corner, uh, white will be happy to uh, capture from behind, even if black gets the three stones there. They're, they're not directly, it's the fact that white gets to make it a false eye here on the left. So, um, 
to start anything black has to play here but actually the corner group um it has for the time being it has some extra liberties and so by by the time that black gets around to filling liberties of one of these two white groups um, white will have gotten an extra move in there and filled black's final liberties so black's behind by one move whatever whatever black does and it's all it's all this empty triangle move that white just played it makes the difference um, if black plays here, uh, this is the also, um, it's sort of dangerous if white does it this way, because um, this is sort of liberties again. Mm -hmm. I think it, uh, it goes bad with this variation, where black only, white only has two liberties left. Right. So um, white doesn't have time to use this tensor because black's filling from the outside. Nice. So, um, so what white does when black does this is white's gonna cut here. And black has no direction from which to play the next card. So that gains a, that gains a liberty. So that's what white was doing with the cut here on the second line, which you might remember white played that move after mm -hmm. black had escaped. Mm -hmm. So that was what that move was accomplishing there. Or if black takes, then white plays here. And again, um, Black's going to have trouble filling the final liberties. Same thing. Black has no way uh, to fill the liberties of this white group. So for instance, if Black starts from here, it's the same thing where Black has no way to play an Atari. Or if Black starts from here, it's just White's going to get these two stones and an extra liberty out of that. Mm. The order of moves didn't really matter. because Right, right. So this was the key move. Um, Black's run out of things to do, so Black starts, and you know, I was telling you, White can push through here, right, right, and play like this and kill that Black group. That's good enough. And this is where computers get really annoying. So AlphaGo started all this, where White could have done that and win, but instead White's going to play a kind of a safe-looking move and allow Black to, for the time being, kill that White group on the upper side. And it's going to be a win for white anyway. So this, it's a weird kind of trade that it didn't really matter, but white's winning anyway. So this is how the game proceeded. Um, so from the human viewpoint, this whole sequence here, um, it's not a forced sequence. Like it's a sequence that um, in some ways I could say it doesn't really make sense, um, but it's working for white. White's basically, the moment white won this semi on the left side, that killed this black group too, of course. And um, and so white could have lived with this group, but um, white actually could afford to sacrifice it in the game and take some profit on the, by capturing these five stones also. So that's what white chose to do. It, it just found a kind of an unhuman way to, to win the game. Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna actually ask that. So yeah, um, <laughs> and, and I'm just sure, I mean, is there a technical reason for that? I mean, is, it, is, it, um, is it just a safer? I mean, I, I'm not sure whether safer is the word that applies. It's just that um, they, when the computer is going to win anyway, when it, it has a, a situation right. where every move is, a, there's a lot of winning moves. Um, it just doesn't always choose the same one as the humans. And you remember with the master series, I was saying that um, it was, losing several points in the end game. Right, right, right. And then winning by half a point or one and a half points or something like that. And I was suggesting maybe it was trying to simplify the game. And um, actually, I think that was not correct. That, that's not how a computer programmer um, would, would define it. it it's mm. a different thing, which I still find hard to... I, I, I find it hard to accept, let's say. I, yeah, yeah, I sort yeah. of, I, you could say I sort of understand it at this point, but I find it hard to ex accept anyway. Right. Well, I think it's it, not it, what we call the correct sequence. Right. Right. No, I'm thinking it has something to do with, too, with you called it inhuman, and I would agree with that because mm -hmm. the, the calculating power to be able to, mm -hmm. okay, we sacrificed that big white group there, it it's the kind of calculation that's difficult for me, for a human it, player. Right, right, and right. It's, and the computer um, is very confident about it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Wow.
So we have all these dead groups and about half of them didn't really matter as far as AlphaGo was concerned. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was, um, the, the, both sides were willing to sacrifice most of those groups at some point in this game. And so that, that's pr probably the, the beauty of this game and what made it so hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's an incredible, I think, I think maybe for humans, part of the takeaway though that is understandable is at least the idea of, of A, of offering sacrifices, right? right? I and, think people do tend to get too attached to their stones once they play them. And it's and like if it's a core or something, there are a lot of cases where it's okay to just leave it. Mm -hmm. And I was I was gonna say I think the corollary to that also is 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 really thinking about you know when you have a when somebody offers a uh, sacrifice, mm -hmm. really thinking about hmm, is it is it really is it worth taking? Yeah. Is, is it yeah. worth taking? Yeah. And I think that's something that even if you don't have the calculating ability of AlphaGo. I think we, we sort of, we, get, we got the hint from AlphaGo and the following computer programs. And people are starting to think along those lines a little bit, professional players I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, and yeah, and maybe we can't calculate it, but we've, been, we've gotten some ideas from the computer programs. Right. Wow. Very cool game, and, and 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 you know, kudos to you for really, you know, again, you know, taking the time to work out. All, I, I love, I love when you start chasing down all of those, you know, <laughs> variations. Yeah, uh, yeah, I sort of pruned it to the. Uh, I guess it was a sort of a one-hour version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could have gone on for half a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. For we would that. have lost most of the viewers, I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, good, good commentary as always. Wonderful. Um, we have uh, four more to go. Four more extra this, games. Yes. This sequence. Uh, and um, uh, just real quick, uh, what's the situation in terms of um, uh, playing both for you and just in general for pros in Japan right now? I know there's been another spike going on. What's what's going on? Um... We haven't been closed down yet, so uh, the tournaments are still going on. We do um, have more distance between uh, the various games being played, so it's less games played in each room than before. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everyone's masked and stuff. So uh, some precautions are being taken. Um, but, like, there was a period in the first shutdown when we actually had to shut down most of the tournaments. And the tournaments mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. um, it's not happening this time. So the, the, the games are being played. And how is it um, playing? You have two players, at least two players. Mm -hmm. You've got, I, do you have game recorders as well? In some cases, yes. In some cases. So I assume um, everybody is, is masked? Of course, yes. And, and there's now. more space. Okay, more space. And how, how is it? How, how long do the games go? Um, most of the tournament games in Japan now are three hours apiece. That's the time control and then oh, um, Gyoyomi uh, over time. Um, although there are some tournaments where it's more like one hour apiece. And those are the ones where we play multiple games each day. So it's, it's usually um, a preliminary tournament for elimination tournament for some TV um, tournament or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's, yeah, there's various time controls. It's, the most common one is three hours. It's a long so, time. What well, this is what I was getting at. So how how is it uh, to be you know wearing a mask for that long? I mean, it's uncomfortable. You know, um, I think it's very necessary for me at this point. Um, absolutely, so, you're, yeah, you're, you're still not vaccinated. It. I'm not vaccinated. Actually, I'm sort of happy that um, I've sort of reached a pause in the tournaments where I'm changing to a different section, and so I'm sort of waiting for the new list of opponents. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a period here where I'm not playing so many. I'm not playing so many games in August, mm -hmm. and I'm expecting to get vaccinated for the first time in mid-August, late late That's August. That's right. That's great. Um, so yeah, it's just that Japan is way behind in vaccinations. They they're not supplying them, so it's it's bad. Right. But, well, yeah. very glad I'm, to I'm hear sort that. of happy that I'm not playing. Going. I'm more worried about the commute. Actually, I think um, go players in general, yes. pretty careful yes. people. Um, but the commute is probably pretty dangerous. You're talking about you'll be commuting on the on the on the metro uh, on the train. subway. It's a, it's a train. 
It's a yes, and actually an overland train, but it's, yeah, it's, it can get pretty crowded. Right. Right. Wow. Uh, as always, Michael, thank you. Wonderful commentary. I have to go Everything. rest my brain now. <laughs> <laughs> But I look forward to to uh, the game fifty two, um, mm -hmm. which right. will. I was going to say maybe it'll be simpler, but I know it won't. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Oh, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you, as always, to uh, our producer Stephen Hu, Eva D. Beach. Thank you all for watching, and as always, thank you, Michael Redmond, and check out Michael's uh, all of Michael's stuff. You should give him your. Um, your, your your where people can find your um all your cool YouTube problems, and uh, your Patreon, YouTube. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check yeah, all that out. Or something. Yeah, we'll we'll have Eva be we'll put that in the comments. But yes, lots of wonderful programs in there. So mm -hmm. thank you all. We'll see you next time. Take care. All right. Thank you.